Welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged, like me. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Sorry I got my schedule a little screwed up this week. I uh, lost my mind Monday night and released today's video, Wednesday, yesterday, Tuesday morning, for whatever reason. I have no idea why. Uh, normally it would be Monday, Wednesday, Friday for sure for uh, Tales from Tech Support, but uh, I got no excuse. Just mush. Also, I posted a picture yesterday of a little project I was working on with a uh, remote system monitor. Um, let me know if you guys are, do you think that's something that would go good on this channel? Are you interested in me doing my little redneck, you know, tech tips or no? Let me know down below. A little informal poll here, but you know, I'm, I'm a gadget guy. I'm a tinkerer. I'm a little unconventional with some stuff as you might have guessed. But anyway, all right, let's read some stories. Your IT fix a sparking fuse box. Just had a call from one of our oldest clients, around 11 machines and one server all running on site. He was panicking on the phone. Him. We just had a power cut so everything's offline and the box is sparking. Me, can you explain further? What box are you talking about? Him. The electrical box you installed, and it's sparking. Is there anything you can do? This was installed by someone who worked for this company before I came on board. Me. I can recommend you call the fire brigade and your electricity supplier. There is nothing I can do. Him. But your IT, it's computers. You can fix it. Me. If it's sparking, it's a fire risk. I need you to phone the fire brigade now. It's not IT. He hangs up angrily, and shortly after I get a call from my boss, who is elsewhere today, saying, Just had a complaint that you wouldn't fix a sparking fuse box. Is this correct? I explain the above call, and he goes, Good. It's not our problem if it's caught fire, and they're 300 miles away. The fire brigade will get there quicker than we can. I don't know what actually happened in the end, but I can now see all their machines and their servers back online, so job done. Back to checking if machines are fully patched. What on earth would make this guy think that, you know, calling IT is the thing to do? First of all, if there's actual sparks, I doubt IT installed that box. If it's any kind of actual electricity, whether it's a junction box, a circuit breaker, that was probably installed by the electricians. Then the IT guy probably pulled his power from that, but... Yeah, IT doesn't usually do that. And down below, we've got a comment from Squish Pitcher that sums up my feelings completely. Nothing has chilled me more in adulthood than realizing how many seemingly normal adults are two steps away from becoming an effing Darwin Award. <laughs> you aren't IT, but can you install this program? Leads to an unexpected twist. Apologies if details are missing. It's been a long time, so some of this has been lost to father time. So this was probably in the mid-2000s. I was fresh out of school where I got my degree in computering. The job was basic data entry. Anything a monkey would be able to do. Take this piece of paper with data on it, put it into the computer, and click save. Repeat dozens of times per day. The company was a contracting company that was hired by some government agency. One that is so OCD about its property, you can't even throw trash in the trash can without approval. Even if that property is a roll of packing tape with no tape left on it. I also needed to get federal security clearance to be employed there, to show I wasn't a terrorist or a threat to national security. And they even checked my credit score too, for some reason, even though I had no authority over money at the job. There were only about five people at the local office, and they all knew I know how to do computer stuff, so some come to me for help. One day my boss asked me to install a program on the PCs. I don't remember what the program was, but when he told me what it was, it seemed like a reasonable request to install it. I had to go to each PC and install it myself. We only had five PCs, so no big deal. I didn't think it would allow me to install it as I already knew I didn't have rights to install software on the PC. I try anyway, and as expected, I get denied. I asked my boss if he can give me the password to the local admin account. He doesn't know it, so he reaches out to the actual IT department. Request denied. So I go poking around to see if there's any loopholes I can use to get access. Manually copy the files to the relevant locations on the C drive and manually add the relevant registry keys. I checked the NTFS permissions of the C drive and they would allow me to take ownership of the entire C drive and grant myself, or everyone in the group, full control if needed. I do have access to RegEdit as well, and again, the permissions on the keys would allow me to take ownership and grant full control, but this method would be way too tedious, so I followed in my mind as a last resort. As I had nothing else to do that day, 
it was a slow day. I was also tinkering around with other aspects of the PC, seeing what I could find. Did they still have Solitaire installed? Turns out they did, along with all the other games that came with Windows. Free Cell, Minesweeper, Spider Solitaire, I think they had that pinball game too. But after finishing poking around Windows Explorer, I moved on to the command prompt. They didn't disable it, so I poke around a bit and get to GP result. Policy name, set local admin password. File to use, network share, files, password.vbs. Please tell me they at least have some access control in place. Everyone forward slash full control. So the only thing stopping anyone from logging in his local admin account was knowledge of that network share path and knowing how to open VBS files in Notepad and nothing at all stopping me from editing the file and changing the local admin password for who knows how many PCs. I face palm as hard as I could that they would be so stupid. I try to install the software my boss asked me to and the password works. I go back to that network share and poke around the folder structure. There's another folder called archive and in there is an archive of all the prior passwords too. <laughs> they had enough smarts to change the passwords frequently, yet put the password in plain text in a publicly accessible network share that anyone can access. And the passwords weren't even that complex either, probably just as complex as having password123 as the password. And as if that wasn't bad enough, a year or two later apparently, some people were caught browsing the internet while on the job, and they wanted to put a stop to that. We only had five PCs, so IT decided they would just remote into the PC and uninstall Internet Explorer. I'm sitting there in front of my PC watching their remote desktop session, and all they do is go to Control Panel, Add Remove Windows Features, Uncheck Internet Explorer. It even says right there on the description that it will only remove the Start menu and desktop icons, but I guess reading is hard. Yeah, they thought it would completely uninstall a core part of the OS. So needless to say, it didn't change a thing since we still had basically full control over the PCs, short of installing software. Plus they still haven't fixed the issue with the admin passwords, so we could just log right back in as admin and undo any changes they wanted to make. The issue with the passwords was eventually fixed years later, right as I was getting laid off from that job because the government agency decided not to renew the contracting company's services. Really makes me wonder if there was any truly sensitive or possibly even classified data publicly available with zero access control in place, short of simply keeping the file path a secret. Well, I don't know about in actual government offices and their infrastructure, if they're any better, but I can tell you in a lot of contractors' offices, their security sucks. They make all these grandiose rules that, you know, you're almost too nervous to even apply for a job there because, you know, you got to go through so many background checks and they lay out 8 million little stupid rules about, you know, surfing online and this and that. And uh, yet, like you said, when you get in there, there's no security on these PCs at all. And as far as your, uh, I noticed you were talking about with your background checks, they did a credit check. Part of that is because uh, people working on different projects or documents, things like that, they want to make sure you're not somebody who can be compromised very easily, whether it's blackmail or whatever. Plus, it shows a lot about your character. If you're going to work there, are you an honest guy? Are you going to, you know, muck around and waste their money or whatever? So, but yeah, that's funny. Their whole IT department figured they could just delete the icons and it would go away. They're more expensive because they're better at containing the magic smoke. Many years ago, I worked for an MSP that primarily served small businesses and nonprofits. Accordingly, many of our clients were very cost conscious. Not in the typical IT is a cost center way, but more in that they were working with very tight budgets. I had a client ask for a quote for some spare Dell laptop power adapters, pretty standard. Identified the correct adapter for their laptop models from the official Dell web store and had my procurement team create and send a quote to the client. I get an email back from the client. Can you explain why the power adapters you quoted are nearly twice the price as the one I found here? Insert link to Newegg. I take a look at the new egg link and respond. Well, the product you identified only has one star rating, and one of the reviews says that the adapter overheated and started a fire. I would not recommend using this product, but if you're willing to take that risk and want to order it yourself, that's up to you. Response back from the client. I have approved the quote. Please let me know when the order ships. Thank you. The guy shopped on price only. He didn't read any reviews. I mean, I think that's how Amazon got so big. People just see a product and a price. They don't even know if the price is better than any other website sometimes, but you know, they see that free two day shipping and things like that and just assume that it's the better deal. 
if their equipment was under any kind of warranty and they got off-brand aftermarket uh, power adapters, that warranty is no longer valid if something happens while that unit's plugged in to that power brick. Let's just adjust the temperature. Back at the start of my IT career, I was a student systems operator on a, at the time, 15 plus year old HP 3000 Series 3 at a college. As background, that system was a really old 16-bit, you read that right, mini computer that had a boot sequence that involved a set of 16 toggle switches and a step button. Oof. Three or four 30 megabyte hard disk packs that were about the size of dishwashing machines and was proudly on display in a glass encased room that was carefully climate controlled. Cold. One evening I was printing reports and doing some other work when I noticed that the temperature seemed a little warmer than normal. There was a circular recorder in the room, I'll provide a link to an example in the comments, that kept track of temperature and humidity for a week at a time. I took a look at it and saw that we were definitely trending warmer than normal. I wasn't the system manager or main operator, but knew enough to know that that wasn't desirable. I called the main system operator and was talking to him about what was happening and how to call out the HVAC guys after hours. While I was on the phone, in walks one of the campus security guards. Guard. Hey, it seems warmer than normal in here. Me. Yep, I'm on the phone to see about getting someone out to look at the AC since we're getting too hot in here. On the wall was a thermostat that was locked up in a plexiglass box with slits in it for airflow. Guard. Huh, I think I have a key for the thermostat box. Me. Hey, I'm about to call out support, so let's just let them work on it, okay? Guard. Well, I'm already here and have a key, so... Sure enough, he had a key that opened the box. He then reached up to the controls. Me. Hang on a sec. Don't touch. It was too late. He adjusted the temperature. What he and I didn't know is that wasn't a normal thermostat. It had an upper and lower range on it. When he adjusted it, it made the too warm air move into a range on the thermostat that was too hot for the system. It stopped immediately. Hard power down. I'm still on the phone with the main operator and I let him know what happened. I can't repeat the conversation here, but suffice it to say that there were multiple four letter words involved. There was a small crowd lined up outside the glass wall looking in to see what was happening by the time the AC guy showed up. After he addressed whatever the AC issue was, I really don't remember now, sorry, I got to start up the system, which still ranks as the strangest boot process I've ever experienced. The toggle switches were numbered 0 through 15. I remember that there were several sets of on off, off off, on on on, off on, off off off, on on on, off step. After the third or fourth step, one of the disc packs spun up and the system booted, thankfully. I now understand that I acted as a human bootstrap, which is included in your PC BIOS today. I don't think the security guard lost his job, but I know that he got in some really hot water. The rest of the time I worked there, I never saw anyone unlock the plexiglass case around the thermostat. Well, let me tell you something about those little uh, plexiglass cases with the slots in them. I don't care what kind of thermostat it is, if it's got those slots, I can change the temperature. Which means somebody else in that office figured out that they could change the temperature. Now that HVAC unit might have had some issues, but at the same time, it's not totally out of the realm of possibility that somebody with a butter knife reached up in there and adjusted that temperature just enough to take the edge off without drawing too much attention. The server is underwater. So I used to work for an MSP that specialized in school tech support, and I worked on the help desk. I answer the phone as usual, and the following conversation takes place. IT is me, you is customer. IT. Hello, this is blank. How can I help? User. We have no internet and the server's underwater. Uh, sorry, sir. Could you repeat that? The line isn't great. User. The server is underwater. IT. Ah, uh, okay. So the server's suffering from water damage? What exactly happened? How extensive is the damage? User. The area flooded and so has the school. The server is partially submerged. Can you help at all? IT. Right. Okay. There's not much I can do from my end, I'm afraid. I'll raise this to the area manager and they'll be in contact to arrange a visit. The server is powered off, correct? User. No, it's still running and has power. Okay, sir, I suggest if possible you shut the power to it off if you can do so safely. Not much to add, but it's one of the calls I had that caught me so off guard. <laughs> Server's underwater and it's still powered on. Once everything flooded, somebody should have been finding the main disconnect or something and shutting the power off to like everything. Like, shut that whole place down. Amazing. Well, hey guys, if you like these stories, do me a favor. 
Let's keep the fun going and click this one here on the screen. I think you're going to like it too. See ya.